In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a training tip, a cycling challenge you can implement into your weekly cycling training plan that should take your road cycling performance to the next level. So behind me is one of the busiest cycling routes or routes in the world being Beach Road in Melbourne, Australia, where every day thousands of cyclists ride up and down this road to either commute to work or to get in their daily exercise. And coming back to Melbourne, I've realized something. <laughs> and coming back to Melbourne, my hometown for a week or two, getting out on Beach Road doing some cycling, there's something that I always find interesting, particularly now, as a road cycling coach, somebody who trains most of the time to zones, and that is the sporadic nature in which most people ride their bikes most of the time. And this phenomena is on display a lot, particularly on weekends here on Beach Road. Let me explain. Beach Road here in Melbourne is mostly flat, but in sections, arguably the most popular sections, Beach Road has small undulations, ups and downs, many false flat sections and winds around corners in often blustery high wind conditions that come ripping off the bay. So this environment behind me here, Beach Road, caters to one of the biggest mistakes road cyclists make when they ride their bikes and that is their training is dictated by the terrain. To show you an example here of what I'm talking about on different terrain, but similar, it's a beach road up where I live in Noosa, Sunshine Coast, Australia. Keep your eye on the cyclist in white up ahead and note that I am pedaling at a consistent zone two power output the entire time. When the road goes up, most cyclists, as you can see here, will go hard on the pedals. When the road goes down, most cyclists will go soft on the pedals. In fact, many free pedal and coast to the bottom of the hill. When the wind blows here on Beach Road, cyclists will drive it into a headwind, and when there's a tailwind, they'll pedal with extreme ease. As a result, when I'm riding here on Beach Road at a constant, say, zone two power output, with consistent pressure on the cranks, I end up playing the zigzag game with many road cyclists out on this road behind me here. Similar to the footage I was showing you just now, I will pedal past cyclists on the downhill, and with the tailwind, and the same cyclists will pedal past me on the uphill or into a headwind. And most of the time, these cyclists that zigzag past me, they're looking at me like I'm the silly one, not pushing it up the hills and riding past them on the downhills as they often pass me for the fifth, sixth or seventh time. So let me pose a few questions for you before I throw this challenge at you. When you run, do you sprint hard, then stop for a while and then take off again at a moderate pressure? When you swim, do you stop in the middle of the lane for no reason at all? No, you will run or swim at a consistent pressure or pace for the continuation of your training session, unless of course you're implementing high intensity interval training efforts. So why do we behave this way on a bike? Because of momentum and the fact we're on two wheels, yet this understandable mistake leads to probably the biggest mistake road cyclists make in training because they end up riding in this moderate to hard on off washing machine most of the time. And they never truly target their zones, especially their top end zone too, their aerobic sweet spot training zone to build and develop different physiological adaptations to better deliver oxygen to the working muscles. So this challenge for you I have, once a week, pick a day to ride for one hour at a zone two level. For bonus points, make it two days. If you have a heart rate monitor, aim for 65 to 75% of your max heart rate. And if you have a power meter, aim for 65 to 75% of your FTP. If you have neither a heart rate monitor or a power meter and no interest in purchasing one, aim for a pressure where if you were riding and somebody was riding next to you, you could just talk comfortably to them without being out of breath. Then find an area that is quiet, away from traffic and hazards that will force you to stop as we want constant pressure on the cranks. So an indoor trainer works fantastically here too. Pedal at a comfortable cadence and focus on constant pressure at the zone two level. As the weeks progress, add in some more volume. Week one, you could ride for 60 minutes, week two, 75 minutes, week three, 90 minutes, week four, two hours, and so forth. Gradually build and develop and condition your working muscles to be able to tolerate a constant aerobic 
power output. And in doing so, certain adaptations will start happening, such as you will grow a bigger heart muscle, you will increase lung capacity, you will improve mitochondrial function, you will increase the capillary density, and so on. So I'd love for you to try this for at least a month, ideally two, and then come back to this video and tell us how you're feeling. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I'll catch you in the next video.